Well, hello there. Today we're going to work on the spring example. I've noticed several people have had some issues with the spring, so we're going to redo it. But we're also going to make a spring with a rubber boot on the far end. So we're going to spread this out over two different videos. The first one today will make the main parts in the spring. And then next week we'll come in and uh, make the boot that will also function in this example. Um, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're hoping to put out more and more videos like this and uh, at least one a week. Um, if you have ideas that you would like uh, to learn how to do using any CAD software out there, please leave it in the comments and uh, we'll get to it and try and get those videos up. All right, so we're going to start a new part file in Inventor. And we're going to make the main cylinder shaft. Uh, got some just basic components here to make it, so fairly easy. We're going to start a sketch on the XY plane. We're going to create a circle at the origin. really doesn't matter. We'll throw a dimension on there of 0.5. We'll finish that sketch and we'll extrude it out eight inches. All right, from there, we'll go ahead and create another sketch. On the far end, we'll create another circle. And we'll put a dimension of two inches on that. I'll extrude that piece out quarter of an inch. All right, on the other end, create another sketch, another circle. And another two inches. Just trying to keep the numbers easy. Okay, come on over on this side. Um, hmm. We'll go ahead and flip this extrusion. Okay. And we'll go ahead and create a rectangle on this face. We'll set this dimension to one, this dimension to 0.5. And we'll put it off the center. Okay, and we'll extrude that up an uh, inch and a half. All right, we'll go ahead and fill at the edges. Point five, and we'll throw a hole in here. At point 0.5 is fine. Okay, we got our shaft taken care of. Before we go ahead and move on, we'll just give it a material real quick. And we'll go with nickel copper alloy and give it some shine. All right, I'm going to save this off into its own folder. So we'll go ahead and create a folder. We'll call it boot spring. And we'll save the part as our shaft. All right, second part, we'll go ahead and make a new part file. And we'll start a sketch on the XY plane. We'll create a circle. And we'll create a second circle. And we'll set the first dimension to two. And the second dimension to 2.125. Uh, 
All right, we're going to extrude that. And we're going to extrude that uh, five inches. All right, we'll come in with a sketch on each end. And we'll just plug the ends. And extrude those 0.125. All right, far end, we need to do the same thing. But we need to put a hole in it for our shaft to go through. All right, our shaft's 0.5, so we'll make the hole 0.5. We'll extrude that, 0.125. All right, and just so that we can see what the spring is doing, we're going to come with the origin plane and we're going to offset that. Uh, two inches. And we'll come to a side view. And we'll just create a sketch on that. I'm not even going to worry about the dimensions. Just make a box. And we're going to extrude that in three inches, subtraction. All right, now we can see in. Before I move on, I'm gonna turn that work plane visibility off. And we'll give this a material. And we'll go with something with some color in it. Oh, I brought that rectangle too far. So we'll make an adjustment real quick. Okay. We'll save this part file off as a cylinder. All right, now our main construction is complete, so it's time to start an assembly file. And we'll go ahead and place in our two parts. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and ground this part rather than go ahead and put the constraints on it. So now it has zero degrees of freedom, won't move. And we'll go ahead and now constrain the axis of our shaft to our hole. And then we are going to apply one more constraint. And we're going to do a face of the end of our shaft to the inside face there. I'm going to set the offset distance at 4 to there. All right, before we go ahead and make the spring, I want to get this all set up and make sure it functions without the spring. And this, I think, will really help as we create the spring moving forward. So I'm going to find that offset, mate, and I'm going to rename it to drive. And in this, I'm going to right-click and hit the drive option and set my initial position to 4 and my finish position to 1. I'm going to move this arrow down and put drive adapt on. 
I'm going to set the total number of steps to 40. And I'm going to do it start and start two times. All right, and we'll go ahead and run it and see if it works. So it's plunging. It's going the distance that we want it to. And everything is all set, ready to go for our spring. Okay, for the spring, we're going to create the spring in the assembly. And we'll create the boot later on in the second video in the assembly as well. So this will be the assembly we work on from this point on. I'm going to go to the Create button and make sure that it's in the right folder. And we'll call it Spring and click OK. It's going to ask us where we want to build this. So I'll just place it right here on the far end. And now we're ready to go. Before I get going, I'm going to use Offset Plane and offset the plane at the end of the shaft at zero. Now notice that my spring is turned to adaptive, meaning it's going to remember what the other parts are and locate it at. And I'm going to offset the inside plane in here at zero as well. So I should have two work planes. I'm then going to also add in a work axis right in the center. All right. I'm going to take a look at my origin planes in my uh, spring part. And I like the Y, X, or excuse me, the Y, Z plane in this case. And I'm going to create a sketch on that. In this sketch, I'm only going to really do a project geometry of my two work planes. So there's the yellow line for each work plane on the origin plane. I'm going to throw a dimension across that. It's going to give me a message that says this will overdrive it, create a driven dimension. That's what I want. I'm going to accept that. It's set to the four, which is what we were hoping. I'm going to come up to the top of the screen where it says FX parameters. And where that dimension is, I'm going to relabel that SH for spring height. Okay, so that dimension is finished, and I can actually hide that sketch. So I'll turn the visibility off. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and create another sketch on the same plane that we just did. And I'm going to create a small circle right up here. We'll give it a dimension of 0.1. And then I'm going to locate it. And I'm going to locate it off the origin. I'm going to go 1 minus 0 0.05. And that should put it right on the edge up there. I'll finish that sketch. And so that's going to be the diameter of my spring. I have my axis already. So at this point, I can go ahead and use the coil command. It finds it. It needs an axis. I use my work axis. I can change the direction if I wish for how it's going to coil. OK. And then I'm going to go to coil size and change the type to pitch and height. I'm sorry, excuse me, revolution and height. For my height, I'm going to change the height to my parameter that I made, SH. For revolutions, I'm going to give it five turns. We'll go ahead and click OK. And there is our spring. I'll go ahead and change the material on the spring. And just to kind of keep some color in here, we'll make it a copper alloy. All right, the one issue with my spring is it extends beyond 
my shaft and also beyond there. So we're going to clean that up before we move forward. And so we're going to use the split uh, solid command or trim solid. It knows the solid. I'm going to pick the work plane. It tells me which way it's going to remove it. I'll say apply. And I'll go ahead and do it again over on this side and click OK. All right. At this point, I can go ahead and turn the visibility of my work planes and my work axis off. And now I should just have my spring. I'll go ahead and return back to the assembly and we can see it in there. Notice that it's adaptive over here with the symbols. And so everything is ready to run. We already set it up. All we have to do is make it work. So I'm going to come under the shaft and my drive and right click and drive. And we'll go ahead and hit play. And there we can see the spring is compressing um, and changing its dimension to accommodate the shaft movement along there. All right, so that is it on our spring creation. Next video, we're going to add a rubber boot on this end uh, that will also compress and uh, as the shaft is moving. I hope you enjoyed the video, um, and I look forward to showing you about the rubber boot next time. Thank you.